tying Catskill style drive flies by Mike Vela. A little correction to make here. I, uh, I went from Gray Fox variant to the Brown by Visible. If you saw, I posted that on on Tuesday. But in reality, I, I skipped one here. Uh, the top's indispensable. See that? Yeah. You know, it's it's. I, if you noticed in that last video, I didn't even show the book. That's because I was tying, and I was like, oh, you know what? But I'll just go to that next one, which I know is the Brown by Visible, and I'll just I'll just start tying them. But I should have looked at the book because then I would have realized that it's not the next one. <laughs> so, it's the Tops Indispensable. Yeah. Okay. Tops Indispensable. One one note I should make here is, is I've said this before, but I'll say it again, is, is that a lot of these flies that I'm tying shouldn't be tied on the hook that I'm tying them on, meaning the hook is too big. This is size 10. See that? Uh, size 10 Olcock. Now, this particular one really should be, a, the biggest should be a 14, right? And it goes all the way down to like a 20 or a 22 or something. Uh, so a lot of these, a lot of these flies shouldn't be on a size 10, but I'm tying them all, I want to tie them all on the same hook so I can put them in a frame, and I also want them to be a good size so that you could actually see what's happening. So it's really, a size 10 is really display purposes and um, I'll, most most flies back then, back in the day, were not tied on a size 10. A size 10 was a really big fly for back then. Nowadays, I mean, geez, size 10, I mean, got a bunch of different size 10s in, in your box. But, uh, and in, uh, you know, coffins, I'm si tying 2X long, size 8s, sometimes size 6s. So, that's just a, just a quick note there. All right, let's get started. The, the, I'm just going to go with this uni uh, yellow 80 and then I'm going to switch to something else afterwards but uh, in the back there is a something you never see which is a a um, a floss tag and it's yellow so I just want to make sure that you don't you don't see any dark thread below it now one thing about one thing about um, floss it tends to slip. Now normally when you look at a salmon fly, you'll you'll see the floss, but you'll also see something behind it, like a like a wire or or a flat tensile or something to stop it from sliding around this bend. There's none of that. So it's something you gotta be careful of and it it it, it, it makes sense sometimes too to maybe even wind it over some super glue if you want to, but I'm gonna put some just some some wax right here and we want to make sure we don't go really too close to that bend because if you go too close to that bend it's gonna it's gonna slip on you for sure uh, yellow floss this just happens to be Danville four strand all right let's put this on like this and I'm just gonna make sure it's on the bottom I'm gonna go back one turn just making sure that we're not near that bend because that can be a problem and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one turn behind this floss mm, actually I disregard that I'm going to put two turns and what that's going to do is that's going to make sure that when I turn this floss on I am without a doubt on wax thread so I don't want it to turn onto to uh, to bear hook because that that is a recipe for disaster. It, that will make it slip. So let's get and now I'm just really trying to concentrate on making some good overlapping turns. Normally on a, on a salmon fly, we're going back and then forward again. If you watch any of my salmon fly videos, I, I basically am doing two, two layers. But in this particular case, we're not doing that. So I think, that should be all right. Yep. And 
Uh, now I'm going to switch to, let me go up actually, I'm going to switch to this rusty dun color right here. I don't think it's necessary, but the yellow is pretty bright and I don't want it to come through the dubbing. Tail, dawn color right here. One of these times if I tear it off, I like to cut the end so that I can roll it. Now, one thing I'll say about tying a tail in after the tag, it has a tendency to, to make it flare. So just be mindful of that. Okay. And now let's go up and make sure this is in. I think that we're going to want to stop the dubbing. Yeah, we need, we, need a, we need a good amount of room. Dubbing. Dubbing is this, I just mixed this up right now. It's three things. It's red wool. It's sort of a burnt orangey wool. And then it's like a cream colored wool. But I'm actually using this, this, this white hair's ear, essentially. Um, and the reason I'm using this instead of wool is because this is going to make a good binder. It's going to it it makes it easily dubbed on. If you don't, I mean, if you don't have the wool, you can use your red dubbing and orange, burn orange and white. But basically, you want it to kind of look like this. You barely can tell that there's. I mean, maybe even not on camera, you can tell. But really, it's red and white. That's 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 the main ingredients of it. And when you do this. Um, if you're tying salmon flies, you, you definitely have red wool, right? Because of the Doctor series. If you look, if you look up, I tie some silver doctors. And there's red wool in the butt and the in the head. And but if you don't know, you don't you tear this stuff off. You don't you don't clip it off with a with a pair of scissors. You just take it and go and pull it away. And what that does is is that it makes all the different fibers in there different lengths, and it also tapers the end. So it it it's it's way better. But pulling it off like this, there it is, scissors. And you don't need that much. This card right here, probably two bucks. This thing will last you last your whole life. Okay, so we want to make sure we get this real close here. Not much. It should be bigger than the tag, but you should also have enough room to do a good, good five, six turns of hackle. And now we're going to put some wax on here. Make sure this stuff isn't, isn't getting caught in. Put some turns down, and then we'll go back. Hackle is again done, and since there's no wing, I would say you want to use something that's fairly long. I always check these things. These hackle gauges, they work, but. See, that's too short. Nothing is worse when you take off a hackle and it's too short, and then what? What do you do with it? You lose it? Yep, yeah, that's pretty much what happens there. So that's, that's good.
tie this in. So let's call that one, two, three, four, five. Can I get one more in? Six. Yes. close then we can go right into a web finish here try and bring this stuff back it can be difficult to to bring this stuff back and do a web finish you just gotta like I don't know it's something you just gotta just practice a little bit but once you get it, once you get that that skill, it's it's great because you can clean up things so easily. And and bringing the stuff back like that, it's not going to do anything to it. You can just you can just just pull it right forward again, and that's it. Now, if you want to, if you like it neater, you can make it neater, you just clip this stuff off. It's going to come out though when you fish it, if you fish it. That's it. Tops indispensable. Mike, uh, Mike Valla, he really picked some interesting flies, I think. He, he, he picked a lot of like different ones unique he didn't pick all the same thing which I, I really like he I mean this one it's way different the the last one the by visible um, brown by visible that's very different the 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 gray fox variants different all these things are very different and it that he didn't just do stuff that looks the same which is great let me show you the front. It gives you a real overview of all the things that the Catskill like fly assortment had to offer. Without a doubt, it was it's um, he, he he's really smart about that. So, tops indispensable. All right, thanks.